Hey y'all, welcome back. Jeremy from thetruthaboutguns.com. T-Tag here, out on the range early in the morning trying to beat the Texas heat with something that I didn't expect that's brand new from Kimber. This is the R7 Mako, and it is a polymer frame, striker-fired, tiny, you know, micro-compact, concealed carry pistol. As far as I know, I think this is Kimber's first entrance into the polymer frame and or striker-fired gun category. Um, so like I said, Total surprise when, when this thing, uh, when we learned about this and it showed up and we started shooting it, uh, it is going head to head with the P365 and the Hellcat and the Max 9 and the Shield Plus. It's closer to the Shield Plus in size, so it's a little bit bigger than like the P365. It's 4.3 inches tall to the flush fitting mag. This is the one with the pinky extension. It holds 13 rounds inside the magazine with a pinky extension, 11 in the flush fitting one. It's about 20 ounces empty, 21. Uh, fantastic trigger on this gun. It, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It definitely has somewhat of a unique look to it because the ejection port isn't cut through the top of the slide. It's only on the right side, uh, which it is, definitely stands out in the market. Most of them have that barrel hood cut through the top. Um, Kimber says they did this to basically protect the optic. And I don't know if you've shot a lot of pistols with optics on them, but that front lens does tend to get pretty dirty. Uh, gas and brass will be going onto that. Sometimes it'll actually break or get scratches because of empty brass hitting it. So that makes some sense. Um, interesting, the top of the barrel does lock into the slide, sort of like 1911 where there's a little lug. So it, it, it's a cool design. It gives it a unique look. Maybe it makes the slide a little bit taller than it would be otherwise, uh, but the gun doesn't shoot like it's tall. Uh, very, very flat shooting, but we'll go ahead and show that a little bit on camera here as well. MSRP's $599 optics ready. It's $799 with this little crimson trace optic, which is great. Automatically adjusts brightness. Very, very compact and lightweight optic. It's about an inch wide at the grip where it has a decent little palm swell to it. Uh, comes with night sights, ambidextrous magazine release. It works from both sides, same with the slide stop. And um, yeah, let's hit the range. It's lighter and crisper than you'd expect from a carry gun, especially a striker fired carry gun. That feels good. Aluminum trigger. 11 plus one rounds loaded up in the flush fitting magazine. I've been carrying it like this for a couple of weeks in the Mission First Tactical Holster, and it carries really well. I was a little worried, maybe because I carry a P365, and this is just slightly bigger. It, it looks and feels bigger on paper. It's not that much bigger. When I lay them on top of each other, eh, not that much bigger. It's a few ounces, five ounces or something heavier. But man, it, it, it carried really well. The grip is kind of forward under the frame. It, it concealed and carried very nicely. Let's go ahead and put a few rounds down range. Such a light, small gun. It's a very flat shooting, fantastic trigger. I mean, it is really impressive, especially, you know, doing it slow in front of the camera is one thing. Out on the range actually running it, it is so short and so crisp. If I'm using the iron sights instead of the red dot, I can see that front sight the entire time. This thing shoots really, really flat. In fact, I'm not losing the red dot either. It just stays there, it gives a little twist, and then it's right back where it started. That is pretty impressive. That was 13 rounds in the extended magazine. Fits exactly my pinky. Men's size, large gloves, hands, right on the base plate there. Good texture on this guy too. Like, has become pretty common is this kind of sandpaper-like pebbled texture. It feels good. It didn't tear up my tender, tender, juicy little love handles either. Nice. One thing that had me a little bit nervous was the owner's manual basically suggested that round nose ammo is what you had to feed this guy. Obviously, it's a concealed carry gun, so that's ridiculous. You need to feed it hollow points. So when Dan and I first hit the range with this, we brought like seven different brands of hollow points, every crazy shape of 
flying ashtray hollow point you can imagine and it ran everything we've shot almost 500 rounds through this gun so far it has been completely 100 percent and i shot frangible stuff i shot heavy subsonic stuff like i said seven different brands and shapes and styles of hollow points and it has run absolutely everything Dropping the magazine from the right side. Pretty cool. The only thing I don't like about these cross magazine releases is the catch is super, super small, but a bunch of companies have gone to that and it seems to work well. So not really concerned, just eh, something to note. lizard out there. Don't want to hit him. The trigger is still really surprising for a gun like this to have such a good, crisp, light, and short trigger. All right, y'all, thanks for joining me to check out the Kimber R7 Mako. 599 MSRP is pretty darn aggressive from Kimber, a company known for making fancier, higher end, slightly more expensive firearms. And you know, it feels like a Kimber in terms of the trigger quality and just how well tuned and everything it is. It shoots really, really nicely. A little bit heavier than some of the guns that it's gunning for, some of those competitors like the 365 Hellcat Max 9. It's about the same as the Shield Plus. Uh, so it's on the larger end of that micro compact, higher capacity gun. Uh, segment, but it holds more. It holds 11 rounds in the flush fitting mag and 13 in the slightly extended one. The ambi controls is a nice touch and optics ready or optics equipped right out of the box. So go on over to Kimber to check out the R7 Mako and also the full review, of course, on the truthaboutguns.com once I take all the photos of this now well used gun. Ran 100% for us and it runs very well. It runs. It runs very, very well, very confidently, um, complete reliability, uh, really just a, a fantastic gun overall. I think maybe the only thing that, if there's anything that's gonna hurt it in sales, I personally think the aesthetics are a little weird, at least a little bit different, but of course, that's completely subjective, so you might think it is the coolest looking gun ever, um, which it might be. I think, you know, being unique and standing out certainly helps, uh, yep. <laughs> like and subscribe do it now but not on youtube over on rumble that's where we want you to watch this and uh see you guys next time